We're back on the air, and this is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis. Uh, uh, first time guest uh, in front of me, uh, Scott Sagan from Littman Gerson Associates here in the Boston area, a tax specialist. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, I love having tax guys on the show at the beginning of every year, end of every year, and the beginning of every year. It's the best time. Sure, sure. Thank you. So tell us a little bit first about the firm, and then uh, and we'll talk a little tax talk. Okay, great. So, um, Lippin Gerson Associates is a 31-person uh, uh, accounting firm. We're located in Woburn. Uh, we're celebrating our 35th uh, year in business this year. Um, it's a great firm with uh, a lot of um, depth and breadth of services. We, we handle um, a lot of work for um, owner-managed businesses, uh, high net worth individuals. Uh, we do audits, reviews, compilations. Uh, tax compliance, international work, and and individual tax work for uh, high net worth individuals. So, um, you know, it's your standard CPA firm, but very customer focused and, and service focused, which I, I think separates us from our peers, or at least we try to. You know, end of year, it was quiet from a tax perspective as far as I was concerned. Other years, people were coming in and making predictions about changes. Is it because we're towards the end of an administration, it was a little bit quieter, maybe terrorism was affecting us, elections? Yeah, I mean, there's no major changes. That What they do every year right now, it, it's kind of a pattern, in that they um, wait almost until the last day of a session to um, sign into law a lot of expiring tax provisions, which again, they did this year. Uh, this year, they call it the PATH Act, and they waited until, I think, December 18th or 19th to pass it. and and put it on the, the president's desk for signature. And what that did is extend a lot of the, the benefits. So it's unfortunate for a small business owner and an entrepreneur who goes the whole year wondering whether there's going to be bonus depreciation, wondering whether there's going to be Section 179 deduction. And we can only theorize that they're going to extend it like they always have. But you never know. Unfortunately, they did extend it. So. Uh, bonus depreciation has been extended. It's no longer something that they're going to have to vote on every year. Um, it will expire over a five-year period, but at least now there's some certainty involved in that the, um, the business owners know that it does exist and they don't have to wait until December of the year to determine whether um, they can buy an asset and depreciate it in, a, in an accelerated method. Right. Um, same thing with Section 179 depreciation. That was also... Um, it, until that act was passed, it was limited to $25,000. And once it was passed, it went back to the old law where they were able to deduct up to $500,000 of, of um, new asset purchases in the year of purchase. So um, very beneficial for a small business owner, for an entrepreneur, for a growing company looking to do purchases. It's just unfortunate that the, the government waits until the last minute to, to uh, institute or they, it. Or they haggle with each other and in the last minute they pass it? Yeah. I mean, and I have clients that want certainty. So I, I had a, you know experience. I was out at a, a client in, in December, and he had a very profitable year, and he needed some new trucks, and he, and he waited until the, the act passed, and then he's running around like a crazy man, you know, from the 20th well, to the 31st. Yeah. Well, at least he had profits. A lot of people. Yeah, no, he, he was doing very well, but he's running around crazily on the last week of the year trying to buy a, uh, you know, a new van for his business. So right. Right. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that that's how the government's operating right now. But nobody, especially in an election year, they're going to be very, um, very slow to institute any significant tax reform. And all, all of the candidates will obviously talk about it. And, and you know, you'll hear the flat tax, you'll hear, you know. Uh, well, you hear a lot about tax. Well, you do, even from both sides, you know, you, you have... Uh, you have the Dem you know it's one of the Democratic candidates talking about you know redistribution of money mm -hmm. and a little bit from Hillary too. Sure. Uh, and you see all the Republicans talking about a, a, a new way of looking at taxes. Absolutely. So yeah, they're a all lot of it solve the problem in a different formula. Yeah, there's a lot of um, bluster, very little substance behind what they're saying. A lot of them don't even have a plan. Right. They're just saying things and and hoping something will eventually stick, and then they'll they'll float some sort of a plan at some point. At least I hope so. Yeah, I can that's understand because it. The, you're the only type of person that would actually look into the details. Most consumers <laughs> who are watching the election don't really go into details. Perhaps, perhaps.